okay so why do we need a face bow see this is the equilateral triangle theory by Bonville you must have studied in your second year pre-clinic what does it say it says that when we connect to condyles with this central point of the contact of lower incisors this makes a triangle and this is an equilateral triangle with each side 4 inch now why is it important what is the use of this equilateral triangle theory we use this equilateral triangle theory to transfer this relation in mean value articulator see this pin tip of pin of mean value articulator represents the apex of Bonville's triangle right and both these condyle are the condylar rods right so this basically we are directly transferring this relation in the articulator and how do we transfer this uh, relation how do we mount the cast on the articulator like this so this is the mounted cast maxillary cast on the mean value articulator so here these are condyle and this tip of our incisal pin this is the one wheel equilateral triangle the side of equilateral triangle and the occlusal plane is parallel to our horizontal plane right and if you have watched my previous video this is an angle this angle is called as bock wheels angle right and each one has different bock wheels angle but in case of mean value articulator it will always be fixed because we are always mounting this at uh, this cast in a particular position this will be fixed position so this angle is fixed in mean value articulator but in patient it can vary it uh, the maxillary cast or the central incisors may be here may be here or here they can be anywhere so we cannot customize the mounting in mean value articulator and for that we need something which transfers the relation of maxillary cast to this condylar rods or condyle and for that we use facebow so with the help of facebow we have posterior reference point where we fixed our condylar rods to condyle right and this facebook can be in any position it can be here 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 how can we fix this rotatory movement of facebook with the help of anterior reference point we use anterior reference point as an infraorbital notch so now when we fix this point and this point our facebook is fixed here right and now we can record the position of our occlusal plane the position of our maxilla and central incisors with the help of this bite fork connected to this u-shaped frame right so now we have locked the entire assembly here and the position of condyle to the central incisors are now recorded it is fixed now and this angle the angle between this occlusal plane and this bone wheel triangle for this person has been recorded it is fixed for this person and we can this now transfer this we can transfer this record to articulator how do we transfer this to articulator like this so this is our hana articulator we have posterior condylar rod here we have this incisal pin incisal rod and this is the infraorbital pointer when we merge this with the face bow the face bow is fixed it is recording the same relation as it was in the patient right so now this face bow is in exactly same position as it was in the patient so this position of maxillary cast here it is as similar as in the patient we have recording the position of maxillary cast of the patient and we have transferred this to our articulator right so this is the first use of facebook it helps to transfer the orientation or the position of maxilla in relation to this condyle where is the maxilla situated in relation to condyle if the position 
supra inferior antero posterior or medio lateral position of the maxilla in relation to condyle is recorded by the face bow this is the first use of face bow but how does it make difference what if we are not using the face bow if we are using the hinge articulator what will be the scene suppose we are using this hinge articulator here so if we are using hinge articulator the axis of rotation will be like this so the moment of suppose we are these are the molar so moment will be perpendicular to this line like this this will be the moment with the hinge articulator so this will be the moment with hinge articulator what if we use hanau articulator what we what if we use face bow the moment with this length the moment will be like this with center here if we draw an arc this will be the arc of rotation this is the arc of closure with hanau articulator and this is the arc of closure with hinge articulator now does it make any difference what difference does it make if we use hinge articulator or if we use hanau articulator so finally this is the diagram of molars suppose these are second molars first one represents arc of rotation arc of rotation of hanau articulator and two represents arc of rotation of hinge articulator okay so let's understand first hanau articulator when we use hanau articulator this will be the arc of rotation the molar will close in this manner right if we use hinge articulator this is the arc of rotation so our molar will directly strike here so this entire portion this will be interference here and similarly this will be an interference so by using hinge articulator the arc of rotation gets changed so this will be the arc of rotation which will in turn produce an interference when we use hanau articulator this will be the arc of rotation and the molar will be properly sitting in the occlusion so it may not make much difference in removable processes but in fixed processes this interference will create a lot of problem so for that also we use face bow so second use so the second use of face bow is it provides the arc of closure to our hanau articulator and these are the use of face bow i hope the concept is clear to you and if you have any suggestion or query you can let me know in the comment section